Hey guys, welcome to my channel Electronics Pedia. Today in this video, I am going to explain about how to transfer a pulse from one clock domain to another clock domain. That is pulse to pulse synchronization. So in this video, I am going to explain about two concepts. That is how to transfer a pulse which is going from a faster clock domain to slower clock domain and from slower clock domain to faster clock domain. Okay, so let's get started. So I am going to start about uh, transferring a pulse from slower clock domain to faster clock domain. Slow to fast. Okay, so uh, let's take a, you know, let me draw a clock, clocking uh, clock waveform. So this is my clock. Uh, I'm saying it's a slow to fast, right? So let me draw something like this. Okay. This is my slow clock. Okay, something like this. Okay. Uh, and I have a signal, so which is a signal A, or it's a, or instead of, yeah, assume this is a signal A, which is a kind of a pulse, okay. So what is a pulse? So pulse is essentially a signal which is, uh, you know, active for only one pulse of this clock, okay, one clock duration, one uh, clock cycle, okay. So now, so I'm taking this pulse over like this, this is my pulse, okay, so now, I want to transfer this signal from clock A, which is a slower clock domain, to clock B, which is a faster clock. Okay, this is my fast clock. Okay, uh, let me draw something like this. Okay. So what happens, so when you, uh, when you try to sample this signal in, uh, or the pulse uh, in the clock domain B, right? So what happens, you assume uh, uh, you don't have a metastable condition uh, just for the sake, okay? Uh, you might have, but just I'm taking example, okay? So if you don't have a metastable condition, what happens that easily? So, so let's say I can sample this signal, okay, like this, okay? So you are sampling this signal multiple times, okay. So that means it is during this window, my signal is 1, In this clock pulse it's 1. Again if you see this marking, right? so you are going to sample it 4 times, right, for 1. And uh, at this window, right, so it's going 0, so you can see that it's a 0. Okay, this is you are sampling this signal in the clock domain B, like this, but Essentially, if you look at right here, right, in the clock domain B, this is not a pulse, right? This is a level signal because it is kind of stable for uh, 4 to 5 clock cycles, right? So, you need to get a pulse on the clock domain D, clock domain B. So, if you have seen my previous video, so where I have explained about the edge detection technique. So, what you would have to do is, you take this pulse. Uh, or a, a signal, okay, in the clock domain B, right? Uh, I'll just mention the sample uh, signal. Okay, this is a sample signal in the domain clock domain B. Okay, now what you do is you pass it through a D flip flop. So D is a delay flip flop, and you get a signal like this. Okay, this is a uh, D flip flop output. D F F Q. Okay, this is a D flip flop op output. So now what you do, based upon this edge detection technique, you detect a pulse like this, passage pulse, because this is a 0 to 1 transfer, right? so, so you detect a pulse on this passage detection. Now what happened, you are getting a pulse, okay, like this, on the clock domain B, clock domain B, you are getting a pulse, which is nothing but a signal B, right, so this is your transferring a pulse from slow to fast domain okay um, but this is not always true okay so what I mean by is uh, this statement is so uh, assume uh, if it goes through a metastable conditions right now uh, then what happens is you have to ensure that your slower clock domain pulse is long enough okay I mean what I mean is, it's uh, the frequency here. It, what it matters is the frequency. Okay, if the slower frequency is assumed, uh, it's at least it has to be like 
um, now assume take example uh, if it's a uh, uh, 100 kilohertz okay if you are sampling this in 1 megahertz or so right then it, you can say that you can uh, you know you can easily sample with this technique but if at all if it is somewhere when I say it's a um, uh, 900 megahertz 900 uh, kilohertz and you are sampling this in a 1 megahertz so that time it is it, it is possible that you may not be able to capture sample this in the clock domain B or you are you have not come out of the metastable state okay so in that case you have to uh, you know deploy a different technique which I am going to explain further in further in the in this video okay so this is understand right uh, so what you do is you take a signal and then you pass it on to the uh, you know, synchronizer two stage synchronizer that is a um, you know double synchronization and then you get an output and then uh, you know feed it to the uh, D flop and then uh, detect a pulse that's a 0 to 1 pulse so uh, that's a edge detection technique so if I draw this in a you know you know in schematically like you know if I put this in terms of the flop and the gates so how it looks like is I'm going to draw that so what I'm going to do, going to do is so I have this signal okay so that's uh, which is launched from domain A this is my D this is my Q this is a clock A so this signal what I'm going to do is I'm going to okay get this signal this is only slow to fast okay so similar clock P and you feed it this is my uh, this is my double synchronization this is not normal two flops as I explained in my previous video this has to be a standard cell this has to be standard uh, double sync double synchronizer okay this is and then you feed it to the D flop and then get the output now what you do is here I'm going to this is a bubble over here so that means it's a I mean what so you detect a edge uh, edge uh, you know post edge on this so you'll get a Q output so which is this is nothing but a slow to fast uh, you know transferring the pulse okay so as I expect if this goes into a metastability in a metastable condition so then you have to ensure that the pulse uh, which is coming from the slower domain is wide enough so that it get captured in the this destination domain so that's a faster domain okay so this is a slow to fast now um, so I'll explain about, uh, explain about the fast to slow so in the fast to slow it's not so easy okay it has to be uh, why I'll just tell you so what happens is if I'm fast to slow what happens assume this is my fast clock okay this is my fast clock okay and uh, I have a this is my clock A and I have a pulse A on this okay I'll just say this is my or maybe just a second this is my pulse okay this is uh, now I'll just draw clock B now my clock B is something like this now what happened so you have this signal clock pulse A if I'm trying to sample this in the clock domain B what happened this is my output okay uh, or the um, sampled output which is B sample B at this window right at this edge my PA input is 0 so that means I'm sampling 0 and during my next pulse right this edge so my input is 
is continued to be zero so i'll sample this zero so that means what happened you missed out this pulse in the sample while sampling in the clock domain b because you are running on a slower clock you have missed this pulse now how do we take care of this scenario okay so for this right um, there is uh, there are two ways through which you can take care of this one is a toggle based flop and the second one is through the handshake mechanism so handshake mechanism is mostly employed where you don't know the frequency of source domain and the clock uh, and the destination domain of course you will know in your design because uh, when you are uh, trying to design something you upfront know that what is the frequency on which it is going to run and if you are getting a signal from another block right so you will know at what frequency that block is giving out that particular signal so in a in a confined uh, you know uh, design so you know everything about the what is the clock frequency of the signals that it is coming from and it is uh, hitting the destination so uh, i'll just explain this technique okay uh, that is a, a toggle based uh, you know a toggle flop based uh, synchronization technique so okay let me uh, just draw that diagram so i hope you guys know what is a toggle flip flop so toggle flip flop is basically when the this is my input 0 and this is my 1 when the input is 0 the output remains as it is as it was the, there in the output the q and when it is 1 so output my output changes to q bar this is a toggle flop okay so now what i will do is i have this signal okay so that is coming to my uh, this is my signal a which is coming uh, what i will do is i will feed it to the t flip flop this is my clock domain a okay so now i will give it to the destination which is having a this is a double synchronizer and this is my uh, two flops inside this double synchronizer this is dq this is dq this is my clock b this is my output okay and uh, this output of this double sync and uh, what I will do is, I am going to feed it to a flop. Okay, this is again a flop, and I'll take this output. Okay, and I'm going to XOR this. I'll just explain what what we are trying to do here over here. Okay. Now, of course, this clock is also clock um, clock B. Okay, so this is also clock B. Now, what happens? As I explained in the like you know toggle flip flop. Now assume this is my clock. Like this. I have a pulse which is like this. Okay. This is a clock A. This is a clock. Oh, sorry, this is a pulse A. Now what happened? This output of the T flip flop, how it looks like is assume this flop this uh, t flip flop had an initial value of zero okay over here so now that means it's a zero now as soon as the pulse comes right what happens my t flip flop output gets set it set gets it gets set for i mean till the next time the pulse comes in okay this is a my tq this is my tq output so initially it was zero and it became one now it has set now what happened what we did is we converted that pulse into a level signal okay so that my double synchronizer is going to capture this safely and it can come out of the metastable state easily okay so that my that what happens my output of the double flop right uh, it, it came away so and I'm, I'm just drawing this okay so it is something like this okay in my output of the double sync this is a double sync output double sync q and then what i'm doing i'm feeding it to the next level says flop so that is like this it's going to get set here here so now what we are doing i'm exhoring so what happened basically what is xor get when one of the input is one so um, so now okay 
when the input, uh, the two, this assume this is A, this is B, what is the XOR get? So if A and B are uh, uh, two different inputs, right? So then my output will be one. So that means uh, it's a A, B, this is my output Q. Okay, so this is a 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So in this case, it will be set. See, when one of the input is 0 and another is 1, right? So then your output will be always a 1. So now what we did? So we are going to capture a pulse over here. Okay. So that means you converted this pulse from the you know, faster clock domain to slower clock domain and you got this pulse. Now how about the next time when the input comes? So we, why we choose XOR gate is, uh, I'll explain that reason now, immediately just now. So if, we, if you remember that the uh, process detection, right? So there also we are doing the similar thing, okay? But here we have to capture this signal, I mean the pulse out of the second, next, whenever the next, next pulse comes in. Okay, so assume that my next pulse, okay, came in somewhere over here, okay? Okay, what we are going to do is, so this will be my T output, so it is already set here, okay, this is my TQ, output of this T flip flop, it is set over here, so it is going to deassert, because when the input is 1, so that time my output, it is going to toggle, so that becomes 0, this is my output. What happens next, my double synchronizer output also, it gets deasserted after some time, okay, after it gets settled, right, so after it comes out of the metastable state, it is going to settle and it gets, it is going to get a 0 value. Now, what happens next? I am going to feed it to the next uh, flop, uh, it's a delay flop and this is my, this is how my output looks like of this uh, D flop. Now, here what we are going to do is, again, you see there is a 0, 1, okay. So that's why my XOR gate output is again going to generate a pulse over here. So by this way, whenever there is a pulse comes in from one clock domain that's a faster clock domain to slower clock domain so we are going to generate a pulse every time there is a pulse on the uh, source domain so here you are getting a pulse generating a pulse on the destination domain here also you are going to generate a clock uh, the pulse on the destination domain so this is the way uh, where you can transfer a pulse from you know faster to slower also okay and this is not necessarily uh, it has to be a well, you know um, uh, faster to slow you can use this technique to slow to fast also but uh, uh, the concept is here when as you know if your input is changing too frequently okay meaning here only i got a next pulse okay and next again i got a pulse over here something like this right if you are getting too frequent inputs right uh, you know pulses on the source domain then what happens is this technique fails okay why it fails because before you sample this signal in the domain b okay because you you have you might have entered the metastable state by then your new input has come so you are likely to have a you are going likely to miss out that particular signal, you know, pulse so that's the reason this is limit this is also limited uh, to uh, certain conditions that the signal coming from the fast domain should be you know it should, shouldn't generate uh, pulses too frequently before it captures get captured in the destination domain. So this is one of the limitations that we have. Okay. Uh, so I would like to know your views about this uh, you know concept. How do we you how can you make it better? Or so you say I I have put it like you know double sync, but it is possible that you can have a you know uh, you we might require a three stage synchronizer also. Okay. So please. Provide your you know uh, feedback and also if you, you know if you want to understand some more concept about this uh, technique, right? Please let me know in the comment section. So I'll cover those you know topics in my next video. Okay? Please, please and also please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.